The purpose of this video is to summarize everything that we've been learning about position, velocity, and acceleration. Now, just so that you know, position is typically notated as S of T. Oh, I need to get my pen again. Here we go. S of T. Velocity will be notated as V of T. And acceleration will be A of T. So the displacement of an object is the total change in position. It's change in position. So you would look at the position function then, and you would subtract the distance from your ending point, S of B, minus your initial point, S of A. So it's the change in distance. Now, when you hear the word average velocity of the object, it's described as the total change in position, so that's the change in the y values, divided by the change in time, so total change in time. Now, we know this in Algebra 1, we talk about this as being slope. So it's the change in the y values over the change in time. So the change in S of B minus S of A, that's its position, over its time. Okay, and we can think of this as the slope of connecting two points on a position function, like the slope of a secant. Okay? Now, instantaneous velocity. So instantaneous velocity of an object is the derivative of the position function. Unless we use the actual word average velocity, then we will assume in a problem when they refer to velocity, it's going to be instantaneous velocity. So it is the slope of the tangent line to the position function. Instantaneous velocity is the slope of the tangent line. Okay? Positive velocity indicates movement in the positive direction. Negative velocity indicates movement in the negative direction. Typically, in a problem, you'll be moving up or down. So up would be positive, down would be negative, or left and right. So right would be positive, left would be negative. Now, a velocity of zero indicates that the particle is at rest. Now, it also just might be changing direction from a positive direction to a negative, or vice versa. Speed is the absolute value of velocity. So speed will not tell us the direction. It will just tell us the rate of change. Hmm? Now, acceleration. This is the rate of change in velocity, okay? Implying then that acceleration is the derivative of velocity. Since it's the derivative of velocity, then it is the second derivative of position. Okay, so acceleration, we just said acceleration is the derivative of velocity, and then it's the second derivative of position. That's the relationship. Now, one thing to, that can be confusing is if we use the phrase speeding up, if we say when is the particle speeding up, well, in order for it to be speeding up, the velocity and the acceleration must have the same signs. Sorry, ran out of room there. Are same signs. Are the same. Maybe I should write same signs. Okay? So in other words, to have a particle speeding up, the velocity must be greater than zero, and the acceleration must be greater than zero. Or the velocity is less than zero, and the acceleration is less than zero. So notice you can be have a negative acceleration but still be speeding up. Now a particle is slowing down when the signs of velocity and acceleration are different. Then you will have a particle slowing down. That is our summary of position, velocity, and acceleration.